Hello, and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I am your host, Heidi Mortensen. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm excited to have with me my friend, Kelly Copeland. Thank you so much, Kelly, for being on the show. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Heidi. Yeah, so Kelly and I actually first met in Minnesota for the Prophetic Conference um, and really just blew me away with your heart for God, for worship, and just your authentic testimony. Um, I think that's what I really was drawn to you about was it was encouraging to me because this is what we need in the body. We need what you're doing and what you're speaking on. Um, so I'd love it if you could just introduce yourself. I've, I've been surprised at many people who don't know who you are. Um, and so share a little bit about yourself. And um, and then if you could kind of share some of the mental health struggles that you have had. Um, and then we'll kind of dive into sharing what the Lord has around this topic in the church. Perfect. Thank you, Heidi. Yes, I'm Kelly Copeland, and um, you know you may be listening, and uh, that and Copeland part may sound familiar. My parents are Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and you probably had either positive or negative thoughts about that, or who's that? Yep, <laughs> That's yep. a good option. Yeah, people that's... either love my my parents, my dad, or they despise and hate them Christians. Mm-hmm. So I grew up with that, you mm-hmm. know, with some people loving you and some people hating you. And, um, but I, I have to say, just to say something about my parents real quick, my parents have the most integrity of anyone I've ever met. Um, they love Jesus. They modeled that for me. They modeled full confidence in him. They modeled total dependence on him. And even the things, obviously we know in the word, I don't know why this surprises us. The Bible says we know in part and we prophesy or we speak in part. Yeah. And you know, most of us, we speak what we know and somehow we think that we're the only ones that know anything. I don't that know. That is true. Very, yeah. very prideful on our part. Yeah. But I think it's also the reason why people didn't stop and listen to what he said. You know, this takes a lot of context. Of course, that's yeah. going on with everybody. I've done right. that to people too. Or just as soon as they say something that I didn't know or say something that doesn't agree with what I know, I stop listening to what they know. That's good. And then I'm not learning. I'm just in this only one it's like going to school and doing one class and going home i mean you're not going to graduate <laughs> right yeah because <laughs> i think we get uncomfortable well i think that we get uncomfortable and we don't like being uncomfortable and i think a lot of what your dad preached on our brains don't get it it's so out there with a the level of faith that we're uncomfortable with that amount of faith and so our brains will just come up with some sort of solution which is no that can't be or this isn't right and and it just then makes us comfortable because we come up with some solution when we really need to be seeking god yeah and, and asking and, him and it, you know we have to remember we have an enemy who has yes. planted himself yes. in our people like the devil's not planted in me well in our soul our mind will and emotion that's exactly where his words go yeah that's and good. it's also where we have to put the words of the lord Yes, if we're born again, our spirit is made new, a new creature. But our our soul, I have found out my when my soul is renewed, Mm -hmm. that's a walk with God. Yeah, that's a growth. You know, I mean, He doesn't just slap newness on your mind, will, and emotions. I don't think they could take it. (laughs) No, we couldn't. We couldn't. (laughs) Yeah, quite a few years. If you're like, I can't stand the last two years. Well, you know, welcome to the refining. Because when Satan tries to sift you, God's trying at the same time to to sift his sift the devil's lies out of you. So it feels very much the same and kind of confusing and very painful. Yeah, not God trying to sift you with circumstances mm-hmm. but at the same time the devil's trying it jesus is trying to get the stuff out of you that the devil's connecting to i mean simplistically i think that's where we've been <laughs> and that's, that's been our problem but that's so that's so good though that you are you're literally putting it out there for us to really see what god is doing and because so many of us are impatient with that process we want it to happen really quickly and so instead of being able to say oh thank you god for refining me we're like why isn't this happening fast enough and and i need this to go away and then we do other things that are destructive to help medicate and make ourselves feel better because it's not happening quick enough yeah 
And, and, you know, instead, if we could just look at it, like, not don't be impatient with God, just have an understanding of exactly how patient he is with us That's and the good. layers, because if he wasn't patient with us, he literally could rip us apart. Yeah. And, you know, from a mental health standpoint, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been through this since probably 2012, 13, this mm -hmm. process of just kind of, kind of coming unwound. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. there yeah. are a lot of worship songs that meant so much to me, you know, but, uh, you know, just kind of being undone in front of him, yeah. uh, unraveling. Yeah. Uh, there's so many scriptural contexts that I can tell you of to, but we don't, we don't have time to go into everything, but yep. the basic bottom line is we are wound up tighter than a top with all of our stuff. Mm -hmm. And it really, Jesus put it like this. Why would you put a basket over the light that's mm -hmm. in you? Why would you put a bushel basket over that light? You don't do that. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you look at everything that Jesus says, we need to get rid of, cast mm -hmm. out, throw away. It's all related to flammable things. Mm -hmm. Would hay, stubble, briars, um, bean, uh, splinter. Uh, I'm trying to think of, there's other ones. I mean, I've wow. found all, all kinds of things and it talks about pluck that up, cast it out, sycamore mm. tree. Yeah. Things that are really, you could say the lies mm -hmm. or the tears. Yep. Yep. The tears will grow up together. Yeah. And why is he not ripping that tear out of you until the right time is because he doesn't want to damage the truth that, you know, hmm. he doesn't want to damage your heart and he knows what needs to untangle first. He's not yeah. in pain with us. We get so obsessed with, oh my gosh, I need to, you told me to forgive and I forgave, but mm -hmm. now I need I feel like I need to forgive again. And we think mm -hmm. he's impatient with us. And instead of just resting in the process and mm -hmm. allowing him to do the work, we got all anxious. And yeah. I loved when we were in that conference in Minnesota, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, Tony Kemp said, he like bear a arrow right between my forehead. He said, <laughs> to, um, I, I want to say it right. Do you remember what he said? To be in patient with God is to question him. Is that how he said it? Yeah, it was something very with God is to question him and you need to repent. Yeah, it's... he had a lot of and you need to repent and I need to repent. You know, it was yeah. very much like I need it wasn't just you. It was I do, too. And he says, don't yeah. wait till the end. So right now, yeah. gotcha or anything we say, yeah. just stop. Yeah. Don't wait That's till good. the end. Because That's I good. love what the Lord says in first John 1 9. When we confess our sin, our fault, mm -hmm. when we confess what he shows us, he's faithful and just to cleanse us mm -hmm. of all sin. So if I confess the okay. sin of impatience with God or questioning him, if I, I see that I confessed it, how does that forgive me of all unrighteousness? Mm -hmm. If I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. But what if we looked at that scripture as though when he shows you something and you see it, or he diagnoses you with something, he's the great physician. Mm -hmm. He's the great counselor. When he diagnoses you with, um, that was pride. That was this, that was mm -hmm. when he died, when you see it, confess it as a, you could say fault, but you know, I really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have begun to hear from him more of a, the word weak, mm -hmm. like fault line, mm -hmm. confess this inner weakness that you've seen mm -hmm. and he's faithful and he is just to cleanse us. That's an operation. That's a mm -hmm. ongoing operation that if we, just cause we get rid of the sin. Now he has more room and more ability and more of an open space in our heart to do the work of cleaning. Mm. It's like, I can cleanse my closet of a few clothes, <laughs> but when I need to cleanse my closet, it is a work and it yeah. looks nasty and all that. But, you know, that's, that's the way it is with our soul, I think. So, right. I don't know. I got way off track. It's a, no, it's okay. It's, it's good. It's good. But so yeah. Yeah. Share kind of, I grew up and I'm yeah. even trying going back to my, 
to who my natural identity in the earth of being Kenneth and Gloria Copeland's daughter, mm -hmm. I'm so blessed because I have a very strong root in the word, mm -hmm. how to have faith and walk by faith, not by what you see. Yeah. And I think I'm so strong in that because I wasn't trying to do that at the same time as pay attention to what I see or I'm trying, I'm not being led by my emotions, but I think trying to learn to walk by faith mm -hmm. and yet try to have healthy emotions, that to me is sort of a, that's a lot because mm -hmm. learning to walk by faith is a lot about not listening, to, not being led by your emotions. Right. And so that left me with an emotional immaturity that, I would have said I didn't have any mental health issues, but my emotional immaturity led to my uh, me having them. And when you don't pay attention to anything, if you're not paying attention to feeding your spirit the word, mm -hmm. you're not paying attention, like, and building a relationship with Jesus intimately and in his word, mm -hmm. um, then you're not paying attention to the strength of your mind. Yeah feeding your mind the right thing the strength of your um uh emotions emotions mm -hmm. the, the strength of your will i think mm -hmm. when you're somebody that's very set on the word yep believe that it makes your will strong like i have a lot of will mm. and i'm very empowered there when i'm facing something because yep. i grew up believing choosing yep choosing to believe God's word over the circumstance. But on the other hand, you know, there was stuff in my emotions that was messing me up and I just didn't know it. I wasn't looking at it. And honestly, I don't even know the Lord and vice versa. You could flip mm -hmm. that story around. If I'm a worshiper or if I'm really strong, emotionally healthy, that may have more of my attention than how to stand on his word. Right. So I think he's, what I think he's done mm -hmm. is allow groups of people to go very deep in different subjects. Mm -hmm. So to me, unity in the body of Christ has not been the goal while going deep in his ways has been heaven's goal. I think it seems like you yep. can take that with a grain of salt because yep. that's just, it seems to me like, because now He's calling on unity. And what I'm finding out is when I listen to somebody that knows something I don't know, and they've gone deep into his presence, deep into worship, deep into how to be emotionally strong and healthy yeah. and mature, I can listen and I can, I start getting healed just with the first 30 minutes of words coming at me because I'm already strong in faith to believe what his word says. Wow. Hear what he's saying to me. Wow. Well, that if you're already emotionally healthy and you begin to hear these things, the possibilities of grabbing onto God's word and believe in it. If you're emotionally healthy, you're way down the road to be able to just listen and believe because the, the lies that keep us from believing a lot of them are in our emotions. Mm -hmm. My, the lies mm -hmm. that I didn't even realize were stopping me from faith in certain areas were in my emotional life. But the yeah. big lie in my life, the Lord had to expose was abandonment. Mm -hmm. I was never abandoned. Right. Have to be. That's the thing. I think people think, well, I don't have a mental health problem. And I don't, I'm not this. And I've yeah. had a good life. I had good parents. I had good parents. Mm -hmm. Awesome parents. I just, right. like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can see where a whole spirit of abandonment came against us in the sense that there was a place where growing up, I knew people didn't like us. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can cause abandonment. Yes. But when I was and, three, yeah. I was in a car wreck and the Lord had to show me that weak place. Mm. But right before that, I had, the Lord had, um, I just saw this scripture, Psalm 1912, and I'm going to probably pray it over you later, but let me read it. Cause that day I was reading and it just jumped out at me like a rhema. He started reading it to me. And that word rhema means spoken word. Yeah. Like we can read and it's called logos, yeah. but when, whether you're reading and it comes alive in you, or he's just talking to you. And it doesn't even have to be something written in the Bible. When he tells you who you are, 
when he tells you, you ask him a question, and he says something back, or you say, I love you, and he immediately says, I love you too. That's a rhema word that has an effect on you that reading will never do. Mm-hmm. So I always like to think I'm reading with him. And when there's something he needs to really tell me, he's going to talk to me. Yeah. I, and I'm in the words from in yes. here. You know, I love that in the, when the children of Israel, when they came to the mountain and Moses said, God said, you know, mountain of blessing, mountain of curse, tell the people to clean themselves up. And they'd been in Egypt and he pull and he leads them out, delivers them into this desert, which they're like, I don't want to be in a wilderness. Why are we in a wilderness? You know, they start complaining, but God brought them out to a place where he could talk to them. Mm -hmm. And so he says, clean up. Well, if you look at the, what the, the Hamash, it's C-H-U-M-A-C-H, I think, but it's an awesome book. It's a Jewish like Bible, Hebrew Mm -hmm. Bible. And it has commentary from all of the, the Jewish sages through the years, you know? Wow. And they say that when God spoke the first word, the first commandment, you have no other gods before me. They heard him say it and it thundered. I think you can read this in Hebrews yeah. too. It yeah, thundered yeah. and it was mm-hmm. scary. And they mm-hmm. said to Moses, well, you talk to him. <laughs> yeah. You tell us what he said. Yeah. And the, and the, the sages say that the evil inclination was driven out of them when God spoke. Hmm. But when Moses spoke the other part, they still were left with what was inside them that wanted to complain and murmur. They didn't get to the, all of the commandments where they're beginning to see, you know, God's heart is to take care of me fully. I don't have to covet. I don't have to steal. I don't have to, you know, Mm -hmm. lie. Right. Because God's here. God's mm-hmm. my God. And the first one is don't have any other God. And the rest really come out of that. Yet they couldn't hear that from the inside. So it just sounded like, rah, 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 you mm-hmm. know, it was just scary. And Moses's words did not have the internal power. And I think that's important for us to remember, because whether you're dealing with mental health or finances or physical health in your body, yeah. when he, when you talk to him directly, Jesus, I learned to talk to Jesus as my human. Mm. He's my human. Mm. And I, he just like met me in that, that commonality. Mm. And he's the door to the father. I just think so many times we want to pass over him for the power of the Holy spirit. We want to yeah. pass over him and just talk to the father. Right. And yet Jesus is the one that's the doorway mm. to all of that. Yeah. And um, so when I read Psalm 1912, it was really a manifestation of Jesus talking to me. Hmm. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? What's a sin? All the sins that are lurking in our heart. It's not, you know, my mom said, you know, um, uh, adultery doesn't start with meet me at the hotel, baby. That's what she said. Absolutely. I'm going to imagine that's, I will that's never good. That. that is so true. Start that is very wise. Here that says your, your spouse is not good enough. Mm-hmm. Your life as it is, is not good enough. You need validation from someone younger, whatever it is. Yep. Something. Um, it starts with a lie internally, not, oh, I think I'll just go, you know, Cheat on my wife. Cheat on my husband. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't just start with that. Nobody goes out to to do that. And we just try to hack the top off of a tree, so to speak, to deal with stuff. Even in, I think, counseling, we're just trying to get to the counseling so we can go on and get our divorce. Yeah, and half the time when I have clients that come in, I'm trying to figure out how I can sell them to actually want to transform their heart instead of just chop off the top of the tree because you are correct and and people aren't doing that because they're malicious or bad that's just where they're at at the time that they're coming and all they can see is their hurt so this scripture describes it so well yeah i never thought about this cleanse me from these hidden faults Mm -hmm. and really it was coming out of a um at the time i was married and second marriage Mm -hmm. third marriage i'm sorry yep cheat the story yeah Uh, somebody said you know 
you tell that? I'm like, if I don't tell how bad things were, or then I'm not saying how good Jesus is. That's so good. But, um, so it That's was so my third marriage, which is also comes with a lot of shame when that's breaking down and not working and you're just trying to grasp it and hold on, maybe not even for the right reasons, you know, because internally you just don't want this to happen again. Right. And you don't want to be ashamed again. Right. And, but the word fault in that instance would have spoken more in my life of my fault. Cause mm-hmm. I heard a lot of that. That's your fault. That's her fault. That's their fault. There's fault, 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 fault. Wow. And that's a very unhealthy perspective to look, to come to God in. Cause he's not ever looking at you and going, that's your fault. Right. He never does he talk to mm-hmm. you about your responsibility in something. Right. Um, but that's a healthy comfort. That's a healthy changing your dynamic conversation yeah. it's not about whose fault right it is because he took our he took our faults mm-hmm. and paid the price for him so he didn't bring condemnation but this is like cleanse me from these hidden i heard it weak mm-hmm. places and i heard it like san andreas fault mm-hmm. so you have this everything on the top of the surface of the city is going great life's going on people going about their day And this little shift way down deep somewhere where you can't see it under the earth, it just moves a little bit and rips up the surface. So Mm -hmm. these lies operate down underneath us and they rip our lives apart and they cause such turmoil. And like for me, much of my turmoil was caused by an early implantation of the thought that I was abandoned in a car wreck, in shock. My dad put me in a car. It's as simple as this. Mm-hmm. I wasn't quite three. My dad put me in a car for someone was going to take us to the hospital. He was going to get in with us. And then he remembered he had to stay with the accident. So he turned around mm-hmm. and the Lord had to show me, but it was after me seeing some of these things. And I started praying, mm-hmm. uh, listen to Caroline leave and ask the Lord to show me the toxic thought. Okay. So All that's that working. Together. So that's where it came from for you. I'm, Cause what I'm wondering is how people at home can think about so you're going deep and you're you're describing something that's way underneath but how did you get there and it sounds like you're listening to carolyn lee if you're asking the questions yeah and and really i went i started worshiping him first i mean that came first because now i have a position if you're a worshiper and you're worshiping with and he told me he said you don't worship with you're not a you're only worshiping with two thirds of your soul. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm a worshiper. I'm, I'm, I have to be a worshiper. Yeah. I've been my whole right, life. right. I love him. I do love him. I've always loved him. Mm-hmm. My life has been given to him, but the area I couldn't see was not subjected to him. It oh. just was set aside. And that was my emotional life. He said, you worship me with your mind and your will, but not your emotions. Mm-hmm. And, and I knew that was true, but he poured that out on me that here's what I love about him. Mm-hmm. If you just can just lay yourself down, um, hear what he's saying to you, let him talk to you. Yeah. Don't be in charge of doing all the talking because I didn't know I needed to be a worshiper. I just suddenly had this unfulfilled craving to worship him. And I started downloading all these worship songs and I became a worshiper, mm. not to any of my own credit, mm because he knew what he needed to do to open my life up for health and life. And yeah. once I became a worshiper, he told me I hadn't been one. Isn't that gracious? So, okay. So, t- so you were worshiping first, then he showed you that you weren't using, been. how did that, how did that happen? So you just were in worship and he I showed just- that. Yeah. Were you in the middle of also listening to Carolyn leave, getting counseling? Like, I, sorry, my mental health brain is kind of going to how, how, what else was spinning for you that, you know, the floodgates were opening and he started doing that for you and showing that for you in worship? Well, it all kind of started around. It was very quick going bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Um, and again, remember I'm in a bad marriage. I'm in a very okay. unhealthy marriage. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to get a divorce, but mm. so you're in the middle of that in the okay. middle of that. It's like okay. people say, Oh, being divorced must be so hard. I'm like, well, it's not nearly as hard as like when you know, you're going to have to get one and processing that and yeah. having 
or no, whatever, et cetera. No, no, that that's, yeah. And, and being in that Art. place of, do I stay in this? And I don't, I can't, I'm not myself or I can't be me. And you really, I think you can't make a good decision about that without, or a decision that you can be firm in and not be ashamed over. I shouldn't say you can't, but I think you can't. Mm -hmm. um, because the Lord, when the Lord tells you what to do, it comes with faith, mm. power. Uh, you know, that's what your next thing is. And it yeah. gives you really an ability to walk with him through it. And so that's sad. the one thing that led me to even the Caroline leaf and this okay. scripture praying, so. this, I think began to open the door for him to do all these things. And I didn't even know I was praying it. It just captured my attention. So I yeah. started thinking and meditating on it. How can I know the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. I think, and you know, right before that, it says his words are sweeter, like honey dripping. Mm. So I was, I had begun positioning myself like that, hmm. but I didn't know what I was doing. I just started, you know, then, then that, and I love him. And remember mm -hmm. all the whole time I'm subjecting everything I know to him. And maybe yeah. you only need this much. That's all he needs. He only needs yeah. what you have. Yes. He doesn't need you to be me and know all this stuff or be right. Heidi and have all this I really didn't even know anything about mental health. Mm. I think it's interesting that a lot of people who are very healthy emotionally, or they've, the idea of going to counseling is one that is great to them. They think that's wonderful. They think that's, you know, going to, especially a Christian counselor who hears from the Holy spirit, who's going to help me come out of this. I mean, I agree with that now, but I didn't, I didn't give it a lot of thought. It wasn't that I thought counselors were bad, but I certainly didn't think you need one if you've got the word. Right. And you've got faith in what he says. Right. But okay. he had to show me my emotions were so small. Yeah. So immature. I had to have that opened up to me. But I think it's interesting that people who are strong in one sometimes aren't strong in the other. Like yeah. In the power of our spirit or the power of our soul or maybe you're powerful in your will but you're not in your emotions and either one is going to be the place where the devil attacks you right but all so, you have to do is this like that's i so needed good. what you know heidi but i didn't have it but i'll tell you i didn't get 90 percent of it from a counselor in the beginning mm -hmm. the lord was showing me he showed me what was missing he showed me the lie that was buried that was causing my mental an emotional hell, because if you can correct me if I'm wrong, because again, I don't know what you know, but this is how it seems to me. Okay. If I am weak in my emotions or I'm weak in my will, either one, that is what's going to affect my mind and give me trouble. Hmm. Like, I think my mind is only as strong as both of those are. So if I'm strong in my will, ability to choose God's word, ability mm -hmm. to choose things for my life, regardless of how I feel, that's a strength. Yes. I don't want to disdain that. Right. But if I'm strong in that way, then my mind is strong in that way. But if I'm strong in my emotional life, then my mind is also strong in that way. But whatever you're not strong in, that is exactly where Satan's going to kick you. Right. And where he's been defeating you. So without finding out these things from the Lord, letting him lead you, taking what you know, and maybe all you know is Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. Most of us know Psalm 23 or John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. Either of those lead to deliverance if you just give yourself over to a conversation with him. I think that's the key is giving yourself over to him. Um, so this kind of leads me to my next question, which is, how to get how can we get mental health into the church more and how can we get faith into mental health more so you know really it's because it's really one of my passions and why i'm even doing this podcast is that i don't want pastors to be afraid of mental health i don't want them to shy away yes i mean i know that therapists would just don't, don't tell a therapist to, to do or don't tell a pastor to talk about mental health and i'm yes we need to because there are people that will never go to a counselor and so if we don't have pastors that are comfortable talking about mental health, they never will get the exposure of the things that you're talking about. They'll listen to you over they will someone to me. And that's fine. I don't care. That's I want them. 
yeah, like I want them to get healthy. So, um, so when I will see a, a client who comes to me and let's say they come with bipolar disorder and, the, and they're diagnosed from somewhere else, they're, you know, maybe they had some suicidal actions and now I'm treating them. I will tell them I am putting bipolar in your chart, but I'm going to talk to you the way that God talks to you. You are healed, you are whole, you are delivered, but I am going to treat the symptoms and I'm going to make sure to check in and see where, where are you at with suicidality, where are you at with your depression symptoms. So I'm going to be talking about the symptoms, but I'm going to be speaking to them the way that God does and empowering them. So how, what is your, what are your thoughts on that, on when someone does have a diagnosis and how we can deal with that in the church? Well, of course, I, I'm, I went through the first part is Jesus. I mean, just go to him. He will lead you to who you need to listen to, but be open to listen to somebody that you haven't, you know, be able to be open to listen to a Kenneth or a Gloria Copeland. Be, be open to listen to, if you need faith, be open to listen to um, a, uh, you know, Heidi Mortensen or a Caroline Lee for somebody that has, um, I think there's a lot of mental health healing and listening to people who also really operate in the presence or in the love of God, like, mm -hmm. uh, Leif Heitland or yeah. you know, people, there's a lot of people you can listen to that operate in m more along the lines of, of emotional health. I, I mean, the Lord, there's more, right. Great, great. Yeah. And I really even, he would, I would open up YouTube and bam. And I ask him, Lord, I, I need something today. Tell me what I need. And it would, he would just do it because he's trying to get the word to us. Yeah. And also, you know, his own words here, but for, let me come at it from a faith yep. standpoint, because that's yep. where I was coming at it from. Yep. And I think you can flip this narrative from whatever side you come from. But for us, if I see it in the word, I'm going to believe it. I mean, that's why I like some of these things where like gender identity and some of those areas where people struggle, uh, you know, I go back to the word people say is such and such a sin. I can't do anything, but go back to what God says, because that's the choice I've made for my life. And if I don't like it, it doesn't change what he says. Yeah. I'm either going to say, I don't want to go with what he says. Or I'm going to say, okay, he knows more than I do. Change my thought. I change my thought. So that's the way I was raised. But Good. so what I saw was funny because I was thinking about what we were going to talk about today and where the Lord wanted me to bring to it. And I just saw something so new. I've always loved the scripture in first Timothy where um, I'm reading it out of the, oh, I lost my place. Um, I'm reading it out of the new living translation. Okay. Um, and it says in first Timothy one, let me read you out of here and then I pulled up some strong meanings. First Timothy one, um, nineteen. Okay. In 19, it says, wait, where is it? Sorry. That's okay. Do you have I can read it too. And, um, I want to make sure I have the. Oh, I'm looking at Second Timothy. No wonder it doesn't say what it's. Yeah. <laughs> like, Wait, Lord, I have that. First Timothy one nineteen. Yeah, it says, and I'm going to back up just a little bit. So okay. Says, Timothy, my son, mm -hmm. here are my instructions for you, based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier. Now, I just want to tie that into what we've been talking about. When the Lord speaks to you, that is a that is a word from the Lord God Almighty. They can come through his Bible. They can come through a prophetic voice. They can come through through Isaiah or Kenneth or uh, any a number of prophets mm -hmm. and um, these words. But he said, based on these words, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. You know, may the words, God's words, whether again, through the word, through what you hear here, mm -hmm. those are the words that help you fight well. Mm -hmm. And you're probably, you may be in a battle right now for whatever. You can't fight it and win supernaturally. You can fight it in the world's way. And that's an option. You can combine the, the beauty to me of having a Christian counselor. And I, I personally 
want a Holy Spirit filled counselor because the Holy Spirit can tell them what I don't see. That's so good. And, and I, I very, very good. Don't think I would go to somebody that didn't, um, have a real life relationship with the Lord Mm -hmm. because somebody digging around in your soul, that's a big deal. Right. And what would be the risk of, what would be the risk of that? Cause I already am thinking in my head, um, seeing somebody who is not, and they could potentially say things to you and label things to you that are not what God wants. Because I mean, I guess you could, I answered your question for you, but if you would add well, anything no, else to that. They have a lot yeah. more options on the table about what it could be. You know, you being a man in a woman's body is not an option for me. And it's not an option God offers as what it could be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and even I was reading the other day and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if this study is true. I suspect it is, but I don't want to mess anybody up. So you can edit this out if you don't like it. But <laughs> but this is an example of a child having that dysphoria with their body, not feeling connected with their gender, going into a, a, you know a, a physical change to have their, their gender changed, and then discovering that the the um what was it it was the i don't remember which therapy it was but one of the therapies i don't don't remember if it's like the the medicine or testosterone or or this whatever they were had going on adhd i i should get my facts for us it's okay (laughs) it was a condition yeah and the treatment leads to some dysphoria Mm. So if you just are diagnosing these things because this is what the options are put up, put to you in school or what the current trending options are of when you have physical dysphoria from being your woman or man, what, what is that caused by? They may jump to one because that's popular and totally mess you up from what God's created you to be. I don't want to mess you guys up with that, but that's serious. No, but this is why I just love your level of faith. I absolutely love it. And because you, just even the way you're like, the first thing I was good to, would do is go to the word of God. And some people listen and they're like, what the heck? And people want to get frustrated with that, but you can't fight it. Like you can't fight what you're saying, which is listen to the word of God. Believe what God says, because he's God. We're not. So you can not like what you read in the Bible, but that's between you and God to talk with him about that and say, God, what about this? I don't like this. And you need to help me with this. And and you can wrestle with God, just like I think it was Jacob who wrestled with God with questions that we have. He will answer them for you. So don't just think, oh, God, I don't like this and I don't believe you. Go to him and ask him the questions just because Kelly has this amazing faith that I absolutely admire, it doesn't mean that you can't get there. And each one of us can get to that level of faith. But I just, even just listening to you, my faith builds. And I just love hearing you talk, go to the word of God. You know, and you keep coming to believing what he says. Well, the hard thing is trying to say, I'm a Christian, I love the Lord, but I don't believe blah, 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 whatever he said your internal self cannot have faith for this. You might believe this, but you don't believe this, but it's in the same Bible and it's in the same word and it's what God thinks. You can't pick and choose those things and be wholly able to, especially in something serious. I mean, Mm -hmm. if it's something serious and you're like, only the power of God is going to cure this you don't have to be perfected at it, but if you don't start that conversation with God and be willing for him to change what you think, be willing for him to send you a voice, be willing for him like on the YouTube or a speaker, or even, you know, sometimes we just pray and pray, but we don't stop and just listen what he says back again. I just want to bring it back. That's to good. That. That's how are good. you going to hear him answer you? Lord is Do you really want me to prosper? That just seems so against the idea of being humbled. And he says, so do you want me to be, I would take it that direct. Do you want me to pour? 
And people don't say, well, God didn't talk. People say, God didn't talk to me. You know, that's not accurate. Right. And, and let, me, let me hear me now. And you may say, well, I've never heard him. No, we just think that immediate response we hear is ourselves. It's usually better than what you would think you should be hearing. Yes. His answers are always better or more life changing or freeing. Mm -hmm. And we think when he answers us, it's going to somehow give us bondage, something we, you know, but even if he's telling you something you're wrong about or something you have to do, it just kind of comes with faith. Like mm -hmm. it comes with an ability to say, yeah, mm -hmm. oh gosh, I see that I'm a nut, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm God, that was horrible of me. And yet <laughs> you can kind of come in. I mean, maybe you feel like a sense of humility or, or humbleness before the Lord, like a repentance. Yeah. But he never brings shame. And so we don't always trust that quick answer. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you this. And I, I believe this is absolutely the truth. Or this is not Jesus. This is not the Jesus that I... um. No. And that is, if you ask him a question and you give him an ear to hear, he's going to be the one to make the first answer to you. He will not let the enemy come into that space. We let him come into the space we by, do. by saying, we do. by disregarding the first thing we heard mm -hmm. and waiting for him to say something. Satan will fill that space up all day, all day long. That's true. Gosh, life, that's good. The lies that's good. Of your, of your unworthiness or you're abandoned, you're rejected. Those will spill. That is also Satan filling the space because he so offered the lie. So we have given him space and real estate in our soul. He's going to speak from there. So we may think it's God, but if you will just set your heart to hear the first thing, believe the first thing that comes back. Like right now, if you just close your eyes, I want to prove this to you. Okay. Just close your eyes. And I want you to say, I love you, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. You heard something back. Now just think, think about, what did I hear back first thing? Most people hear, you know, kids, they hear a string of stuff that mm -hmm. I think all the adults can handle because we're so stubborn is, uh, I love you too. Mm -hmm. I always hear him say, that's I love what you. I hear. Yeah, that's what I hear. And then he'll just keep talking. If I give him space, if I just give yeah. him enough quiet and I'm waiting, so in his present, he'll just keep talking so and good. you get very comfortable and familiar with, if you ask him a question, that first thing, Lord, mm -hmm. do you love me? Yes, Lord. And you'll never hear a no about that. I can just mm -mm. say that, but mm -hmm. you have to learn to trust that first thing. So when you mm -hmm. ask him questions, write it down before you can stop and think, right? Right. And so that's, that's, so good. that's my little lesson on that's that, good. because when we hear him in our heart, again, it begins a conversation and it also, um, we believe it more because it comes from the inside. That's why right. on the flip side, if somebody tells you, if I said to you, Heidi, you are the most selfish person I have ever known. I had somebody say that to me one time and I'm like, it didn't attach because I'm like, I'm a lot of things. Yeah. That's not a struggle for me. I, I'm so good. sometimes too much the other way. And I know that about myself. So that lie is not planted. So when that came at me, it had nothing to attach with to speak to my internal self. Yeah. And I just disregard it. But boy, if somebody said, Kelly, you are the most uh, procrastinating whatever you wanted to say now that yeah. one would be like it might hit you yeah it differently because yeah. it's also hitting me from the inside mm -hmm. and that's really right. what speaks so right when i saw this word about um in here he's saying you fight a good warfare with these words i just gave you some keys to getting better words mm. um but here he says cling to your faith in christ and keep your conscience clear. I mean, I got that this morning and you're like, I want to talk about the soul and faith and how they mm -hmm. work. There mm -hmm. you go. Cling to your faith and keep your conscience clear. So mm -hmm. I wasn't doing this because I didn't understand. And that word, um, let me see. I looked up some words for y'all. Uh, 
the mm, prophecy, I don't want to go back that far, but let me um, be, we, we have to be vigilant, he says. That's like being on guard, like mm -hmm. an army would. Um, this word, uh, faith, is conviction of truth of anything. So we have to cling to that conviction and truth and belief. Didn't Jesus just say only believe? Mm -hmm. That sounds hard, but it's a decision and a choice. It make. is. It is. It's harder when there's something else coming from the inside. Mm -hmm. It's different than what you're reading or what you're hearing. But when he speaks on the inside, it helps uproot the inside stuff. But when you read in the word about being double-minded, mm -hmm. that's what he says. And alongside with a lie that's planted and you're struggling, mm -hmm. you're struggling with, to believe what he said because something else is speaking. And that's where he said, pluck that up and cast it into the sea. And yeah. then the truth has a place to take root in that space. So that um, belief, conviction, strong conviction, that's, that's what we are born. When we are, we have mm -hmm. faith, we have the faith of God. Mm -hmm. He put that in us That's when we good. were born again. That's and in good. fact, we had to have faith to get born again in the first place. But when you get born again, you now have everything that Jesus uses to believe is we on do. you. We do. And he made himself to be found, the Bible says. He is okay. easy to find. And so we just hear his word and we can put faith in that. But when our conscience is not healthy, that's hard to do. So with our conscience, let's see, it says... Um, to have, uh, to wonder at, think highly of, excel, be distinguished, have a good of good constitution or nature, hmm. and then I'm just reading some of these words that are in the scripture. Um, the consciousness of anything, uh, this is good. The soul as distinguishing between what is good or bad. The soul as distinguishing between not just that's evil, that's good, but also what's right, good and bad. That's what's truth and what's lie. Wow. Yeah, that's just, good. That's your soul. That's the soul good. as distinguishing that. Um, then there is the word I don't, to thrust away. Okay, let's go back to that. One. Let's go back to this. So it says some people um, cling to your faith in Christ. Keep, keep your conscience clear. We have to have both of those. Mm -hmm. For some have deliberate, deliberately violated their consciousness. And you may not have known you were deliberately, deliberately did that. But when you thrust away your consciousness, when you thrust away your mental health and say, I don't need that. I don't need to pay attention to that. And I have to say, that's what I did with my emotional life because I was learning not to be led by my emotions and led by circumstances only by my faith in what he said. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's, I suggest you find that power real quick because yeah. when something hard happens and you can't look at your baby who's been in a car wreck. I had that happen. Mm -hmm. You can't look at your, your child who they're said is going to die. Mm -hmm. You can't look at that. When those things happen, you cannot you cannot, I mean, you need to take your emotions to Jesus, but you cannot be led. Mm -hmm. You cannot go down that path of letting your emotions be in charge when mm -hmm. something like that happens. If you want to have an outcome that the Bible says you can have, you're going to have to believe. Right. So you can't go down both. Of, so you can't have both of that happening. But when you're strong in your emotions, you know, you are sitting right in the master's lap and these words that are in his, the Bible, mm -hmm. you believe them. And not only that, but he's just like, mm -hmm. Kelly, this yeah. is it. <laughs> Kelly, you're okay. Kelly, yeah. I'm here. Kelly, say this, say yeah. this, say this, say these words. And I've been in situations where I didn't, I went with what I already had experienced before. And I said those things mm -hmm. and I didn't have the power that, all right, Lord, what do I say? I'm feeling overwhelmed. What do I do? Mm -hmm. So our faith has to work with that healthy consciousness instead of throwing it away. And then some people have said, well, I don't believe that about faith. Mm 
I don't believe I don't have faith. I have faith in God, but they don't have faith in his word. And they're not putting them in, even if they want to have faith in his word, yeah. they have no idea what he said about their healing or their prosperity or their, even their emotions. I didn't even look up what it said about my emotions. So I didn't even have faith in it because I was putting that away and, uh, and cast it away. So from you're me. kind of, kind of like, I don't want to say ignoring it, but in some ways that's what you were doing, kind of ignoring your emotional health because you were just focusing on faith. So I yeah, I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. Just tell me, be quiet when it's no. <laughs> well, we're we'll, get, we're getting it. no. It's good. We're yeah. We're almost we're almost done. I'd love for you to to pray, but I like you have it, this is so much wisdom. This is so good. Um, well, so yeah, what t- talk about what what happened yesterday? Let me just talking, let me tell you yeah. this real quick, and then yeah. I'll read into the scripture, and then we'll we'll finish up. But yeah, this. So I was talking to somebody the other day, and um their child had come to them saying, I feel like such and such, like rejected, you know, Mm -hmm. which is very common among kids, right? Today, especially they're having a lot of rejection and confusion and people are mean Mm -hmm. and their friends can even be mean. What are they doing? Mm -hmm. They're trying to find their place, their Mm -hmm. validation. So being mean to you is how they feel good about themselves. Right. So backwards. It is. in that it's confusing. And so this, this child said to their parent, um, I feel this way. And they said to their child, no, you don't feel that way. I don't think that's right. Here's you are loved. You are this, you're that. And I just listened to this, to this person. And then I said, you know, this is something I had to learn recently. Um, we can't, change how somebody feels and we really can't nor shouldn't tell them how they feel they do feel that way and even in myself I tried to tell myself I don't feel something so putting it away uh putting my emotions casting them away is like I refuse to feel this I refuse to feel doubt I refuse to feel fear and the Lord had to show me the error of that is wow this is so good the feelings he gave me, this is how we cast it away. The feelings he gave me, he gave me for the precise reason to see what is the difficulty. Wow. So if I'm telling That's my good. child, and I'm, I shouldn't even have said I did this with this other person because I've done this plenty myself. When I'm telling my child they don't feel that way, I'm giving them no outlet to express I'm teaching them not to take that expression of how they feel to Jesus. They can't even bring it to me. How are that's, they going to bring it to Jesus? Oh, I'm probably so not taking it to Jesus either. I'm just saying, so good. Okay, I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way. I rebuke that feeling. I rebuke that yeah, feeling. Yeah. I refuse to feel that way. And um, anger. And I would always say, the Lord had to help me with this. I'd always, I'm not angry, but I'm not mad, but. And one day I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and, and it's okay so that you yeah. And it's okay hey, in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that doesn't just push that anger down to come back later. Cause mm-hmm. I did a show with Tim Ross, pastor Tim Ross. Mm-hmm. And he said, whatever you don't let come up and out of you with words will come out of your body, come out of you in some form or other. hundred percent. This and is where, where so we good. sin. There's, there's a lot of sin that comes out because of that. We right. we numb, you know, and we offload hurt and we put, we it has to go somewhere. This is so golden. Shame. shame. And so if we can stop, and I, and, I, and I put it like this, you have the feeling over here. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing because the feeling tells you something is wrong over here. Mm-hmm. Something is making you feel dismissed, rejected, abandoned, fearful. Something is making you feel this way. So if we can take the feeling and appreciate it, don't feel guilty over it and take that thing to the Lord or, and we can get help with a counselor and all that as well. A a spirit filled friend is often a quick phone call when you, I think taking it to the Lord first is very powerful because a friend can will even often affirm what he told you or add to it. Yeah. A good way. But then see, Satan would love it. Love it. If we never felt a thing, he would love it. If we never felt the fear and the lie that was speaking about our, our, our protection, he would love it. If we never felt the 
uh, anger because just this lie is just going to keep working. Mm -hmm. It's like when your air conditioner's working and it's cold inside and it doesn't matter that the coils are bad because, but boy, when Texas heat, it blows out, suddenly you are aware that Mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're aware, oh, the compressor's dirty. You should have cleaned it. And I'm like, that was actually two weeks ago. Oh no. (laughs) But I wasn't aware or thinking about the compressor as long as I felt fine. Right. And so our emotions work yeah, out. That that's way. good. There's all this stuff that's speaking. So we want to get at this. So we need to acknowledge the feel instead of cast away the feel that keeps our conscious clean. But what he says is as a result of either tossing away of not keeping your conscious clean or even the other side of it, tossing away your faith, um, as a result, our faith has been shipwrecked. And I love that word shipwrecked also had the connotation of um, not being able to move, of not being able to find your way. Mm. And um, so we've felt a lot of shipwreck lately, but Mm -hmm. by grasping, when I was shipwrecked, I felt shipwrecked, Mm -hmm. but I grasped a hold of what he was saying and I began, he began to heal my soul. Hmm. Of course, my faith is strengthened already, but mm-hmm. he strengthened me more when this got hold, this got wow. Oh, yeah. So in these things, we must, we so must, good. we're going to have to listen to people that we don't think have anything to teach us. And the Lord knows who to send you. You can't just listen to anybody in the world. But yet, if somebody loves Jesus, there's probably something in there that is helpful to you. Right. Brother, brother Kenneth Hagin used to say, eat the hay and spit out the sticks. That's good. I think I'm learning to discern what are sticks because mm. I had a lot of the sticks that needed to go in the fire, the wood, hay, the stubble mm-hmm. needed to go in the fire. And mm-hmm. you can just ask him that and say, burn up and burn up and expose anything in me. Like that mm. Psalm 1912. Mm. It's just, he's so gracious. Yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, this last thing I'll say, mm-hmm. he exposed something to me that was very very serious and had very very big consequences in my life and not that the whole thing was my fault but i'm not talking about marriage or anything it was something totally different Mm -hmm. but in the moment he showed me where my where i had stood on the thing uh, something a ground that was shaky Mm -hmm. i'm standing for something but I didn't get the what to stand on from him. I just was kind of shaky. I was leaning mm-hmm. on something I'd had from the past. And he showed me that and it was devastating. It could have been devastating to me to think I didn't bring the fullness of what God could have poured out of me in that situation. But you know what? He exposed it and he healed it like that. Wow. I did not have time to feel guilty. Wow. I did not have time to feel the shame of being a part of, this situation he just showed me Mm. healed me corrected me healed me all at the same time because he's not after just exposing you no he's wanting to expose the satanic devices and lies in your heart and all we have to do for that is open up and it's gentle sometimes very like funny you can be mad over a paint color that's my story (laughs) I got mad over a paint color and I just blew up and I'm mm. like, Lord, but now I've learned to blow up means I'm feeling something. That's Something's feeling going on. And it's yep. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so said, what is this? And I yeah. mean, in 30 minutes, I had a life answer in me that the Lord showed me something that went way back. That is so good. And I dealt with so something good. that could have been devastating and it was funny mm-hmm. because it was over paint. Right. A color called marshmallow. I had a meltdown over a marshmallow, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he really is uh, awesome at this shepherd thing, laying is... you down, doing the operation in you. Psalm 23. This I encourage so you to read that today, Psalm 23, and just think about laying down with him and the, yeah. letting him, you know, sitting at a table with him and let him tell you what's good what he put in there and tell you what's wrong with let's quit being afraid to hear what's wrong with us of course there's something wrong with us i mean we're incomplete but he's Mm -hmm. really working right now to complete us Mm -hmm. hence the shaking we've been in as hebrews 8 uh hebrews 12 says 
that after this shaking that's coming, we'll be left with an unshakable kingdom. And I, I, to me, that's worth every so meltdown. Good. I'm like, bring it on, Lord. Let it come up. Let it come up like a toxic yes. thing. Yes, take it. Come take it away. Let it show. Yeah. I'm not going to be ashamed if my grossness shows. I'm just going to take it to him and let him walk me through getting rid of it. Mm, this is so good. I hear a lot of people even just getting free by your testimony and what you're sharing yeah. that we don't need to be afraid. Yeah. A, Would you be willing to pray for our listeners? Kelly? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus. We just thank you. We thank you that you are our shepherd. We thank you that that includes us knowing your voice. A shepherd speaks and a sheep knows your voice. So we just become sheep. We stop trying to hide, put on, clothing wolves put on clothing we just put on you and we stop hiding and we thank you for diagnosing us diagnosing where we're missing it diagnosing the roots taking us all the way back to when something opened up when a worry door or fear door or some thing opened up in our life show us the root lord and we will walk with you out of that and exposure and healing and we thank you for the cleansing of our heart. We thank you for Psalm 91. And we just pray that, or Psalm 19, 12. We just pray that cleanse me from these hidden weak places, Lord. Mm -hmm. Show me, expose it, and tell me what to do and what to declare and what to choose. Heal me in my emotions. Feed me in my faith. Help me, Lord, to be strong in my mind, my will, my emotions and my body because I, as to be as strong as my spirit man is to be as strong as you are on the inside of me come out of us so that we can pour out your goodness and to be a container that's fit and ready for your use and to be a light that there's no basket that all of the straw and the wood and the hay and the stubble and all those things it's been woven together to hide the light and the power and the glory that's really on the inside of us we just thank you for burning up the basket untangling it and throwing it in the fire and we cooperate with that lord show us how to cooperate with it. so we take whatever we are whatever we know whatever we have in our hands lord you never ask for more than we are and never ask for more than we have and you've never asked us to do anything more than we can do and we just give you all of that in jesus name we thank you for being our shepherd and lead us. We shall not want in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, this has been so wonderful. Thank you so much for being on and sharing your amazing emotional <laughs> and faith wisdom. Um, you are, it, this is quite amazing what he has shown you through faith. This is through faith. Like the to me, this I I'd rather be on your end than the spiritual than the emotional end first. Honestly, listening to him, like I wish that I had that that foundation. Um, but coming together, he's he's just bringing a lot a lot of wisdom in the body, though. Well, let um, me validate real quick for anybody that is watching because you have grown up in faith or you have listened to people like my parents and the great faith word of faith faith in his word, integrity of his word, that's been the, your life and you've grown up that way. Let me just validate the assistance of, um, you know, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Assemble yourself with somebody that knows something about the soul and behaviors. I mean, I had, I was learning about behaviors and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's, I don't even have to have faith to discern what two plus two equals four. These <laughs> behaviors equal this mm -hmm this deal and you can start more from a place of diagnosis from behaviors and let the lord begin to untie it right like a head start with right. an anointed person who knows and is hearing from the holy spirit asking the right questions jesus asked questions of the woman at the well because he knew what to ask to unlock that box mm -hmm. and so meeting with somebody like heidi um i mean even the techniques and things that they know now I th you know, when I think about some of the things that you can do if, with a therapist, especially an anointed one, 
that you think, how did they even discover that? How did they discover if you do this and move your eyes, you're going to unlock the, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. uh, but how did, it had to be God right. mm -hmm. to discover something that works like that. Right. So right. Just let the Lord lead you for sure, but open up, open up right. to That's good. what's That's good. being, having a clear conscience That's and good. getting rid of some of the lies and stuff that the devil's planning. Yes, that's good. So how can our listeners get a hold of you? I know you're on Instagram and you have a website, mm -hmm. kellycopeland.com. Yeah, Kelly Copeland, uh, Kelly at Kelly Copeland. Let's see, no, Kelly Copeland. <laughs> There's a contact name right there on kellycopeland.com. Okay, and it is K-E-L-L-I-E. -E. C-O-P-E-L-A-N-D. Yes, it's not with a Y. Oh my. All my contact stuff is right there and, okay. and you know, conference, uh, just I'm getting better about putting that schedule and stuff on there. But yes. And, and what, and what are you doing? What does God have you doing next? Like what, it, what does he have you doing right now? And are you speaking? Are you traveling? Like, what are you doing? Well, I just suddenly started getting invitations to speak. So I'm doing some of that. I also have a full-time job at KCM wow. and I have a, I have grandchildren. I have an 11 year old at home. Oh. So I love that. And, yes. um, but also my book, I have a book coming out in January. Yeah. It's, I know it's exciting. It's called awake to his presence. It's wow. a, a guided devotional, um, journal. Mm -hmm. It's all of those things. Oh. So it's guided for con what I did today with the, I love you. It's a really a mm. conversation that I just want to open the door to somebody so they can keep having them the rest of their life. You know, yeah. it's not really about so much the, the devotional part it's from him. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the words he said to me that opened me up, Yeah. but I want somebody else to just kind of dive off of that diving board into yeah. this wonderful relationship with him when his words are being heard. Oh gosh, that's I'm good. Well, can't, that in January. Can't, yeah, I can't wait for that to come out. Cool. Well, thank you and so much, Kelly. Show starting in the fall. Or uh, yes, or yes, your yeah. show. Yes, yes. You so uh, are yes, on. yes. I love it. Her yeah. So that was so yep. good. Yeah. So, and that will be on the victory channel or how, how can they get a hold of your show that's coming out soon? Um, well, right now, if they go to victory, go victory.com, mm -hmm. I have a show also on YouTube with Jerry Ann Savelle. So it's awesome. Kelly and Jerry. So we have like okay. 70 episodes on YouTube oh, great. on our Kelly and okay. Jerry uh, channel. However, yep. In August or September, my show will be on. It's govictory.com. So, but where you're at now, you can still watch some things that we that we've done. But yep. uh, she's moved to some different things, and so I went on and did it myself mm -hmm. with great guests. Yeah, and I'm excited about that. Awesome, cool. Well, thanks so much, Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Heidi, and thank you guys for being willing to listen, especially you that maybe started out not sure about what a Copeland would say. I just want to thank you for the mm -hmm. humility to listen and hear what um the lord's the truth sometimes i think people we speak and we have all we all have errors so they hear that instead of what you really Absolutely. are good at so thank Absolutely. you for being willing to listen today